Who have said? Who have said? With our tongue we will prevail. With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Our lips are our own. Who is the Lord over us? Who is the Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor. For the oppression of the poor. For the sighing of the needy. For the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise. Now will I arise. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. I will set him in a safe place. I will set him. I will set him in safety. I will set him in safety. From him that puffeth that puffeth at him. From him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words. The Lord, the words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. Purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them. Thou shalt keep them. O Lord. O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from the generation forever. Thou shalt preserve them from the generation forever. Our scripture reading was from Psalms chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the brother for the psalm. It's a good psalm for this lesson. I say it's a pleasure to stand before you. And um, I pray that we get some understanding from this lesson. This is actually an old lesson I did back in 2020, but I just revised it uh, today. So, pretty much the same ideal but different journey on this one. So, again, title of the lesson is Every Word of God is Pure. My name is Brother Joel, this is Brother Chris. And happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It is a blessing to wake up to see another day. Okay, let's start this off because some people may think that this is a joke and a rehearsal, but you are rehearsing for eternal life or you are rehearsing for eternal damnation. So let's look at this first. Let's go to Psalms 119. And we're going to let this marinate. Psalms 119, like they say, let this marinate in your food. And then you can, you know, taste all the ingredients, you know, the flavors come out. Well, the word of God is to be eaten, and it's very flavorful. It also can make you sick. When you see the lamentations and the woes that come about when you read and study this book and find out what's really happening. Psalms 119, and pick it up at verse 89. When you get it, go ahead. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay, so it says right off the bat, forever, and forever is forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That means can nobody mess with it. Doesn't matter if they believe it or not, it is settled in heaven forever, right? Go ahead. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. And then he says thy faithfulness is unto all generations, all generations that believe and do as this word is. Go ahead. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. And it ain't going nowhere. People think they about to escape what's coming to this earth. Oh, we're going to run away from God when he come down. No, you ain't. He, he going to burn everything coming down. So while you going up, everything else is falling down. Ain't nobody escaping when God come back. And people are unaware that when the Lord returns, he is doing straight damage. It's playtime is over with. All this witchcraft that's getting ready to take off and all this other stuff. Yeah, the Lord is saying when I come down here, it's going to be some problems. Go ahead. They continue this day according to thine ordinances. His ordinances. They will continue. Go ahead. For all are thy servants. Uh -huh. All the ordinances, all the things that God set up, the angels, the water, everything, the elements, they are his servants. They do what he say do. The animals, we, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're not behaving the way God said, Satan got you, and he got something for Satan in his dominion, right? Amen. Verse, skip to verse 96. 
I have seen an end of all perfection, uh -huh. but thy commandment is exceeding broad. And these commandments are exceeding broad. That means they ain't going nowhere. They're so huge, and he's going to magnify this even more. So let's look at some things, because sometimes people look for outwardly things. Let's see what the Lord said about beauty. Let's go to Matthew first, 23, and let's look at a few things. Because some people feel, you know, hey man, um, I like this because uh, it, it, it looks better. Well, I like I like y'all because y'all look better. And you sing better. <laughs> we'll see. Matthew 23. And pick it up at verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now he called them hypocrites. Now the Lord wasn't soft with the scribes and Pharisees. So people who knew the law. You know, as they say, everybody they always want to scream the law, the law, the law. I guarantee you ain't doing it every, you know, the right way all the way. You can't. Not in this. We are not captivity. You can't keep it. And I'm going to show you why you can't. But you do your best. But the Lord is calling these scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. Why? For ye are like unto whited sepulchers. Whited sepulchers. You know what I'm saying? You know what a sepulcher is? It's a grave. Right? Clean. Go ahead. Which indeed appear beautiful outward. Yeah, we're going to pick out this beautiful place to lay our parents, you know what I'm saying, or our friends. It's beautiful, right? Look how the Lord is looking at this. Go ahead. But are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. And you see that? Because that's what's going in these sepulchers, in the grave, unclean stuff. But some people look outside for those beautiful things, but inwardly, you got some dead men bones people that are choking the rest of the people with their hypocrisy. Backbiting, talking about people. You know, over there, you don't go over there. Camp banging, as they call it. You know what I'm saying? Look what the Lord uh, said. Go ahead. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Uh, outwardly. You know, all nice looking, talking good. Yes, yes. You know all that stuff? <laughs> and then turn around and he says this. Go ahead. But within, ye are full of hypocrisies and iniquity. You full of sin. You see that? When people do that, they don't realize. The Lord has already called sentence on people like that. Remember what we read first. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So if he's calling you this, look what else he says. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. hypocrites. Hypocrites, go ahead. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets mm. and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Mm -hmm. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. See, they was killing them then, and I guarantee you, if they had the opportunity now, when you speak against them today, they'll kill you now. Go ahead. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, mm -hmm. that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. You know, like they say, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. Satan was a murderer, right? And the worst for the Satan, sometimes to do it ignorantly, but when you behave like that, you become a murderer too. When you hate your brother, your sister, when you cause all type of, uh, you know, all type of strife, or when you say things to cause people to look at another place like, really? That's how it is. You're supposed to do it the right way. That ain't how you do it. Let's look at it again, Matthew 10. Again, every word of God is pure. This is a different side to this lesson than I did back then in 2020. And it's good to revise things sometimes. So you can look at it in a different view. Verse 37 when you get it. Matthew 10 37. And <clears throat> just know don't fret what the evildoers do or when people spit the venom, as they say. Let them spit it. Your work should be shining anyway. I ain't got to worry about what somebody say about me. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? My God knows what I do. Only God can read your thoughts. I can't read none of your thoughts. And no matter how good you are of assuming, you can't read thoughts. Even though some of y'all get close, huh? <laughs> I know what you'll do. You're going to go in that house and drink that liquor up, ain't you? <laughs> and eat all the chicken. <laughs> but the thing is, the Lord reads the thoughts. So let's look at this. Matthew 10. And pick it up at verse 37. When you get it, go ahead. 
he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now, now wait a minute. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And what? And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now you got to ask yourself, why would Jesus bring up those important people in our family? Mother and father and sons and daughters. If you love them more than you love Jesus, you are not worthy. He ain't saying not to love them. He's saying don't put your love above me with them. Go ahead. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And you can't get mad because things go wrong and then quit God. You know what I'm saying? You, oh, things ain't go my way. I didn't get the promotion. Or I didn't get, you know what I'm saying, the money I needed. Oh, I didn't get this. Oh, I got this. Uh, and this is bad. Well, God is saying, okay, that's the cross you're going to have to bear. Because look what he did. He died. No, he didn't die. He got murdered. He got lied on and murdered, beaten to death, right? Go ahead. 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Uh -huh. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. You see that? If you lose your life for Christ's sake, you're going to find it. You're going to get eternal life. That's what the bigger picture is. Mm -hmm. All this striving back and forth about the law, what you can do and what you can't do. Look, the thing is, you better be hoping you get eternal life. Because you can be talking about fringes and all that other stuff. And you ain't keeping the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You ain't keeping none of that, but you tell us why put some fringes on and speak Hebrew. You ain't got it. You're not going to get eternal life because you are killing people. You're choking them. Go ahead. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And when you come with this word to people, it's not your word. So don't be trying to talk to them like as if, hey, man, I'm God and I'm telling you. No, these are God's words. <laughs> You can't, don't get mad. I mean, we all been there. I done got frustrated with family, friends, you know what I'm saying? People at work want to beat you down because you're giving them scripture and they can't fight you back because they don't know a lick. <laughs> but the thing is, these are God's words. And your job is to just edify. Hey, man, I'm just showing you what it says in the book. You said this, but this is what's said in the book. Thus said the Lord. That's why we say that. But go ahead. So it says, he that received uh, you receiveth me. And what? And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You see how that, that really connects you with the Father, the Son, and we become a family. You know what I'm saying? When you give God's word and people receive it, they receive Jesus, and then they receive the one who sent Jesus, which is the Father. Isn't that beautiful? So we can get eternal life. You want the Father to come supper with you. Look at this. It's not in here or in the revival. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to try not to jump around. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Revelations 3, pick it up at verse 20. When you get it, read down to 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh -huh. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, mm. even as I also overcame and then sat down with my father in his throne. You see that? You see how that just worked together again? If you are listening to God's word, if you receive his word, he's going to bring in the father. They're going to come chill with you. Come sup with you. Y'all going to chop it up really the right way. His word is going to convict you. You know, you're going to have some tearful moments. You should because all the things that you done done wrong that you have to now recite to the Lord. I've been doing this for a long time, Lord. I am undone, like I said. I was undone until this touched my lips, you know, and cleaned him up. That's how the word does. So he said he'll come sit with you and sup with you and be, like he says, and sit as I overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. That's why we want to wake up in that first resurrection to sit with Jesus on that throne for a thousand years. Amen. Every word of God is pure. You got to do what's written to get to that point. And it ain't going to be easy. You got a lot of struggling to do, a lot of fight, because you got to cleanse this mind, which is never going to be cleansed until the Lord cleanses it completely. So you got to deal with that battle. Yeah, I want to do that. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> Keep reading, 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. Okay, let's go back to uh, Luke. Let's go to Luke, rather. Chapter 9. Just a few... Revisions here. Every word of God is pure. It 
If he said it to the prophets, if he said it to the apostles, he's saying it to us. It's just as good. Just like Moses had the commandments, we have the commandments. No different. You can go and read when Moses complained about it, it was too much for him. And he said, go gather 70 others and I'm going to put that same spirit that's on you on them. And they're going to deal with the lighter matters. But the hard stuff Moses had to continue to do. The other people didn't have no new spirit. <laughs> they had the same thing. Righteous judgment, mercy, and faith. You had to teach it the way it was given. Can't change it because it's forever settled in heaven, right? Lou. Chapter 9, and we don't want much here. We want verse 62. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You hear that? Every word of God is pure. That means once you start this journey, after you got baptized because you don't believe and you understand a few things, start keeping the feast days and knowing what's clean, unclean, and stuff like that, your do's and don'ts, the covenant, which is the 10, then all of a sudden hardship come on you. And you know what? I, I can't do it. And you, you ain't fit for the kingdom, he said. You can't walk away from God and think it ain't going to be no punishment. You got the will to do it, the free will to do it. But God says you ain't fit for the kingdom. He ain't even got to say much right here. If you ain't fit for the kingdom, guess what? You on the outside of the kingdom. <laughs> That's what you fit for if you walk away from God because all your protection is gone now. The angels that was there to encamp around you have now just been told, fall back, soldiers. He's on his own. Or she's on his on her own. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with God. It's all or nothing with God. Amen. Mark 14. Again, we follow God knowing that we are sheep in the midst of wolves. You're going to be in danger. If no one has put it to you that way, I'm putting it to you that way. This word of God will get you killed. You make yourself a prey when you start being obedient to God. People are not going to like you. So you have to get used to people looking at you and snarling. Oh, you're a Jesus lover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can say something back, but I ain't. You know? But I am later, trust me, because you're going to keep talking. Mark 14, let's look at it again. Mark 14, pick it up at verse 21. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. Uh -huh. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Mm. Good it were for that man if he had never been born. You see that? So Judas got this warning, but we got a warning too. If you betray the Lord, by saying, I ain't doing none of that, or, you know, denying him and all that, before people, the Lord said, I'm going to deny you too. You can't, you can't play God like you do your friends and, and get mad at your friends and family. Oh, you did, I ain't, I ain't doing nothing for you. The Lord will send you out butt naked and tell you to do something, and you're going to turn, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> something is going to happen to you worse than being butt naked. Ask Isaiah. <laughs> He had to preach for three years butt naked. <clears throat> That's a story y'all can go find and read. That's your assignment. Every word of God is pure. Psalms 12. There's yeah, some good things about this gospel, you know, healing the sick and preaching to the blind and waking folks up. Yeah, we did it. We got more people involved in the word of God. Yeah, but what about when things don't go the way you think they're supposed to? Ask Stephen, how did he feel? After he preached that gospel to all those stick necked brothers, and they stoned him. And he had to look up and see the throne of God and say, you know, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can you say that? I can't believe it. <laughs> so you got to ask yourself, these are the things that you have to ask yourself. Did you take the, the count that this may happen? That you may be put in that position? Sometimes I never thought about it until I was in that position. I said, I blew that mission. I said the wrong thing, did the wrong thing. And hopefully I get another opportunity to straighten it out. Psalms chapter 12. And 
And all of this is is to let you know that, hey, we have so much work to do. And forget about what everyone else thinks of you or say about you. Let it roll off. Give them some encouraging words from this book. Study to find out what you can say to them when they say some bad stuff to you. You know what they said? I'm going to say this. Because usually when it first started with me, when you said something bad, I searched for the hardest thing to hit you with. Yeah, you're going to pay for that one, you know? <laughs> but now I think of the better things to say because a soft answer turn away right after. Mm -hmm. Psalms 12, pick it up at verse 6. When you get it, go ahead. The words of the Lord are pure words, mm -hmm. as silver tried in a furnace of earth, mm -hmm. purified seven times. Just like in the Psalms he opened up with. You see what I'm saying? That's why these things work like the Holy Spirit just works instantly. This brother just looked at the name of the title and pulled that verse out. And I said, yep, that's in there too. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus now. Keep reading. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The Lord, he says, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Then we read that forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven forever. It does not change. And right here he says, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That means it will not change. If the Lord said, I'll kill you for killing back then, he's going to say it in the future. If the Lord said this is an abomination back then, it's an abomination today. And people have to get used to hearing that. But, you know what I'm saying, their ears are closed. Because people love to tell you they love their shrimp, lobster, and crab. Let's go read that. Leviticus 11. Because <laughs> when they say it, they're like, man, what do you think about shrimp? I stopped eating shrimp. I'm like, yeah, why you stop it? Because it's unclean. Not bottom feeders. I don't say that no more. It used to be because you ain't want to offend, but no, you offended me. I cramp and shrimp. You eat that stuff? I used to, though. I can't pretend like I ain't never do nothing wrong. Leviticus 11, pick it up at 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts which shall be eaten among all the beasts that are on the earth. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among beasts, that shall ye eat. Now, that's what the Lord said. You can't turn around and tell me that's been changed. <laughs> I don't care what you read in here. It has not been changed. Mm -hmm. And I ask him plainly, show me where it says now you can eat that which does not part the hub and all them other things. Show me what God said. Now it's clean. Oh, they go to <laughs> Acts chapter 10. <laughs> we can go there and kill it, but that ain't in the lesson today. That, that does not make sense. But we, we could kill that easily if you understood what Peter had a vision of. It was for people, not food. So, verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that cheweth the cud, or of them that divided the hoof, mm -hmm. as the camel. Yeah, I don't hear nobody making no big fuss about eating no camels. <laughs> tell them that. Hey, man, you like eating shrimp. Go eat you a rat tomorrow and tell me how that tastes. <laughs> oh, man, that's disgusting. How could you ever? Well, look what the Lord said. That's how you have to look at what the Lord said. That's disgusting, too. Go ahead. Because he cheweth the cud, uh -huh. but divideth not the hoof. Okay. He is unclean unto you. That's all. That's all you got to read. Hey, the Lord said this. It said in the beginning, and the Lord spake. It didn't say in Moses spake. That's what people get the, the tuning problem. Where do you read, thus says Moses? No, we're dealing with a higher, you know what I'm saying, entity. God. Jesus, in fact. The same Jesus said, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't worthy of me if you love mother and father more than me. Or if you, you know what I'm saying, betray me, it'd be better you not been born. We talking about the same Jesus that flooded the whole earth. Every word of his is pure. That's who did all this talking. So we see in here all these unclean. Go to verse 7. 
and the swine. Mm -hmm. Though he divideth the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, mm -hmm. he is unclean to you. You ain't gonna never read nowhere where God says, now you can eat the swine. No matter how bad they wanna eat it. And they roast them things, they show it everywhere. I'm like, dang, that's a pig's head. Oh man, it just gives me disgusting feelings all over. But I used to eat swine. Verse 11. We're not going to, no, actually go to verse uh, 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. That's it. You ain't got to add nothing to it. But people want to say, oh, no, see, what it is is, no, no, I ain't know what it is. Read it to me. Read where it says these you can eat now that's in the water that has no scales and fit. Read that. Because what I just read is, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. That's right. That does not change. For we got to change God. That means we all in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, I said you was going to get everlasting life, but now I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing good all these years, but you just, no, nah, you can't make it. you too perfect, man. Go on, go on over there. <laughs> no, you in trouble then. That don't make sense. So forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So he says, these you can eat. That's in the waters, right? Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And all, that have, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. That's it. End of discussion. And I tell them, now you use the New Testament to get around that. Because it sounds like you want a certain bit. I'm not saying they bottom feeders. So what if they are? That ain't why. He said they're abomination. They're unclean. That's all I can go by. I can't read bottom feeders. I can't read nothing you just said. Because that's what they say. Oh, man, you know, they what? They Because they, they clean the algae. Well, why you want something that's clean the algae, man? <laughs> Catfish and all that. Man, come on. So we have to look at this. Look, let's go to Deuteronomy, and let's read something else, because we can go and see, and hold your spot there, I meant to tell you that. We're going to go right back there, because I want to read something, one more part to that, to show you. Deuteronomy chapter 4. If the Lord's word is settled in heaven forever, and it's pure, I mean, you can't do nothing to it. How are you going to change something that's pure? We ain't even pure. So as soon as you touch it with your defiled hands, it's messed up. Deuteronomy 4 and 2, when you get it, go ahead. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Nah. The Lord said, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish off from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now, people sit up and they do that, though. You got churches that have been struck off covenant, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't do it. They do it. They in trouble. They are in serious trouble. When you mess with this word, you are in serious trouble. Because he said every word of God is pure. Proverbs 30. Let's look at it again. And then we're going to go back to Leviticus 11. Proverbs 30. Verse 5. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. And when you get it, go ahead. Every word of God is pure. Mm -hmm. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Mm. You mean to tell me, if I put my trust in the Lord's word, he has shield me? Mm -hmm. And just like those Hebrew boys that said to uh, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, we ain't be too careful to ask you. We know our God is able to save, but even if he don't, and they was like, shoot me, we still ain't bound. That's how we have to behave. You have to look at, hey, the Lord can save you. 
He can stop what's about to happen, ailments, all that stuff. We know he can heal you. But if he don't, don't lose faith. Because the bigger picture is immortality. Verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Oh, if you found a liar. Okay, I did say Levi uh, we was going to go back to Leviticus 11, but let's go to Revelation 22 real quick and see what he say about that. If he find you to be a liar, there's a problem. There's a serious problem because he said this. Revelations 22, pick it up at verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Mm -hmm. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, if God add plagues to you, who can take them off? <laughs> Only God. And once he had them, he's saying right here, I'm adding something. It ain't getting taken off. Go ahead. And if, any, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life mm. and out of the holy city mm. and from the things which are written in this book. That means you're going in a fire. Period. Every word of God is pure. Even this. They want to get aware on this. Oh, hey, God loves everybody. There is no fire. Why would he take me out of the book of life then? Ask him that. Why would he before we get to the fire, why would he take your name out the book of life? If it's no book of life, that means you're in death. God loves you that much that he gonna take your name out the book of life? Because you wanted to do what you wanted to do? Nah, it don't work like that. These words are powerful. And they're going to happen whether people believe it or not. So you just give it to them. You ain't gotta beat nobody upside their head and tell them, hey, you listen to me. <sighs> <laughs> Get the scripture out. <laughs> and, and no, you don't have to do that. Now, for the ones that's combative, you know, trying to stop you from what you're doing, yeah, you, you know, you do your thing. But we are freely given this word, so we freely give it back. But this is how the word is. Now, let's go back to Leviticus 11, and let's read why we don't mess with that. Leviticus 11. And when y'all finish reading Leviticus 11, you know what you can eat and what you can't eat. We know. We have that dietary law here. We just read about some things that you are not to eat. Matter of fact, pick it up at verse 29. Just in case somebody that likes to eat these things happen to turn on the YouTube channel and see us. And they've been frying this up. Go ahead. These also shall be unclean to you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. Uh-huh. The weasel. Yeah, you like eating weasels? Fried weasels with cheese. Go ahead. <laughs> and the mouse. And you like mouse salad? Well, here it is. Go ahead. And the turquoise after his kind. You see that? That's a turtle. And people love turtle filet mignon or whatever they want to call it. Well, the Lord said these also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things. Go ahead. And the ferret. Uh-huh. And the chameleon. You know what those are. Those little funny, cute pets people like having. Go ahead. And the lizard. The lizard. And the snail. Uh-huh. And the mole. Verse 31. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever doth touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the even. Okay, so he letting you know these are all unclean things. And you're going to be unclean, right? So he's telling you not to do this. So, verse 43. You shall, make, you shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be the that ye should be defied thereby. Now the Lord is telling you he don't want you unclean. He don't want you to deal with abominable things and he doesn't want you to be defiled. What makes you think you can turn around and say, no, that's not what he's saying. You can't do that. And if you are doing that, you are headed for destruction. Keep reading. For I am the Lord your God. Oh, for I am the Lord Moses. They ain't say that, did he? Go ahead, read that again. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. You see that? God said that. You shall be holy if you sanctify yourself this way. Go ahead. For I am holy. Oh, so be ye holy as I am holy? That's what Peter had written because he read this. 
So that's why Peter can say, I have not eaten anything common or unclean, Lord. Go ahead. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh huh. For I am the Lord that brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. To be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Go ahead. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Keep going. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beasts that may be eaten and the beasts that may not be eaten. You see that? This is the law of that. That means it is settled in heaven forever. It does not change. You can't change it. I can't change it. And if anybody stand before you or sit down with you and start reading, you see the Lord say he could take this and make it disappear. Man, get out of my face. Let's go see something else. This is how you know it can't be done away with. Matthew 5. Because you got people that are arguing. Argue. Hey, man, go ahead and argue. Turn blue in the fact I got the same scripture I just read to you five minutes ago. I'm about to go for them again. You ready? Here we go. Same scriptures over there. Well, you keep repeating yourself. Yeah, well, the Lord repeating himself to you too. <laughs> That's what we do. We keep reading the same scriptures. They don't change just because you don't like them. Matthew 5 to 17. When you get it, go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, he said he ain't come to destroy the law or the prophets. So we just read the law and the prophets, right? About what was clean and what's unclean, right? So you can't do away with it because Jesus said, think not I am come to do away with it. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. till heaven and earth pass, one jot nor one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. All has to be fulfilled. And all ain't fulfilled till the Lord returns. So that means us in captivity who think we got it right about the law, you ain't going to get it right until the Lord teach it right. Because we got some missing components. I don't care how long you've been doing this. I don't care how savvy you are. I don't care what dictionary, whatever. We don't have it right. We wait for the Lord so we can get it all right. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, mm -hmm. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You see that? You're teaching people to eat unclean food, you're going in the fire. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So if you like your fried weasel with uh, mustard or deja, whatever you want to say, <laughs> the Lord said you're going in the fire. Because there's people that eat raccoon. And, Man, you ever had coon by the moon? No, dude, I don't do that. <laughs> coon by the moon. <laughs> no, we don't eat like that. Even when I was a kid, I never wanted to hear about that. So we see that every word of God is pure. We see that you can't change it, no matter how much you want to change it. To fit your purpose, it does not work. You can finagle all you want. The Lord read mine. He knows who's who. What you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. So let's look at something else. Because I know we love the law. But I don't see nobody professing this. Leviticus 24. Because if these kids understood what could be done and would be done, the parents would have did their job. But because we're over here in this captivity, we got lost. And so we're continuously falling short of the glory of God. Leviticus 24, pick it up at verse 10. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, this, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. Mm -hmm. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. Uh -huh. And they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Sh Sh Shilomith. Mm -hmm. And the, da the daughter of D Dibri mm -hmm. of the tribe of Dan. Go ahead. And they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. Okay, so this <coughs> child then said something against the Lord. They didn't know what to do to him, right? Just like these children out here today doing things against the Lord and parents 
man, the people just killing crazy, right? So they didn't know what to do, so they put them in war until what? The mind, not the mind of Moses or Aaron, but the mind of the Lord could be revealed to them. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses. And Moses spake unto them. Read that again. And the Lord spake. And Moses spake to them. Because people think this is the law of Moses. Right. I get that Jesus even said that. But you got to understand and put it in the proper perspective. God gave his word to Moses. Moses is a servant. He had a job to do. That's it. Just like we all got a job to do. So again, pick it up at verse 13. Right? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp. Wait a minute. The Lord said, you know what? Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp. Come on. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you hear him? <laughs> if these kids could see this today. Yeah, I heard him. Everybody, yeah, we heard him. And look what they do. And let all the congregation stone him. After they lay their hands on everyone that heard it, they're going to lay their hands on it. And it said, let the congregate all, all the congregation stone him. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. Go ahead. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. You see that? The Lord is not playing. Skip to verse 22. You shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord your God. Go ahead. So you see that? It's always... Israel and then the stranger. You see that? No matter who that stranger is, if you hanging around Israel, you got to follow the same law or you're going to get the same problem. Go ahead. Or the same reward. Go ahead. And Moses spake to the children of Israel that they should bring forth him that have cursed out of the camp and stone him with stones. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now this is the law, but you can't do that here. Right. You can't do that here. I, I, I mean, hey, if you do it, <laughs> you already know where you're going. This is not our home. We don't make the laws here. But this is a law that the Lord said do. But we ain't doing that here. Now, Romans 12. Yeah, these kids can learn a lesson from that one right there. Because they said, even if you curse mother and father, let them die to death. They can learn a lot from that. Look at these kids today killing their parents. Some of them for money. And some of them doing it because they didn't like the way their grandma told them they couldn't have bacon and eggs in the morning. And they say, oh, we don't believe in no God. We're going we to tell the, the universe what we're going to do. Okay, well, do you know somebody created the universe and he's listening? <laughs> yeah. We want Romans 12. I'm adding some things here, so y'all bear with me. Romans 12, and pick it up at verse 19. When you get it, go ahead. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Can you do that, Israel, one time for your mind? Can you do that? Nope. Think about it. Read that again. Dearly beloved. Dearly beloved. Avenge not yourselves. Avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath. Give place unto wrath. Can you do it? If not, you got work to do. Remember, every word of God is pure. Go ahead. For it is written, mm -hmm. vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Yeah, it is. So how are you getting some get back? How do you get your get back? You let the Lord do it. You let the Lord do it. Because all you're doing is causing more wrath for you. No matter how righteous you may be or think you are. The Lord just said right here, vengeance is mine through the mouth of Paul. So if vengeance is the Lord. How can you take vengeance? Give place to wrath. We don't like wrath. Who wants to be in some wrath? I surely don't. 
I spoke the word at my job, and next day I know this dude was on. You are blaspheming. Point his finger, turn. I said, beat red. <laughs> I just laid back, chill, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't even got to be that serious. You can't read what you said. At this point, we just be quiet. Because you can't say or read what you just said. And I read what I said. Quit. First Corinthians 7. Yeah, people get mad. I mean, shoot, like I say, ask Stephen. He, he he broke that thing down so hard they couldn't withstand him. And I, well, he's he's just doing. <laughs> he's too mighty in this thing. The Holy Spirit was on that brother, and he broke it down from. I mean, he went way back. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it to Jesus now. Jesus, oh man, yeah, y'all killed the just one. Next thing you know, hey, hey man, we can't take it no more. First Corinthians seven. This is like that time I was on the road and I was preaching on the CB. And dude, I don't know how his truck could go that fast, but that sucker caught up with me and read out my numbers and told him what color truck and everything. I was trying to stop in uh, Indiana. I had to drive all the way to Wisconsin. I said, they waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did 16 hours on that log book. <laughs> they were like, hey, man, you ain't smart. Hey, hey, I'll tell you later. Yeah, write me up. I don't care. I had to get saved. 1 Corinthians 7, pick it up at verse 2. When you get it, go ahead. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband. Mm -hmm. so don't be out here looking around for other husbands or wives when you got one. Go ahead. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Go ahead. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. That's what they're supposed to do to one another. None of that, you know what I'm saying, faking. Right? Keep going. The wife hath not power over her own body, mm -mm. but the husband. That's right. Give it up. And right, but that's the way it go. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. And likewise, also, the husband hath not power over his own uh -huh. body. Uh -huh. You got to give it up, too. Go ahead. But the wife. Uh -huh. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time. Now, now think about this. If y'all having a hard time and you can't get things together... Well, the Lord said, do this through the mouth of Paul. Go ahead. That uh, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for so, a time. So consent for a time that what? That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. So sometimes y'all just got to realize that we know it's not right. Let's fast and pray. And let's give it some time. If you both are trying, it's going to work out. If you're both with the word of God, it's going to work out. Only way it ain't going to work out is one is not with the word of God. It's going to be some more reason. Now, I ain't doing that one there. What? <laughs> <laughs> I like my kidney beans and my chili. <laughs> <laughs> or I like to do these things. You see what I'm saying? It's supposed to be with each other. We're working it out. Right? Go ahead. End of five. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. You see that? So that Satan don't get involved, because he will get involved. All he needs is a little back. Oh, yeah, that's what you don't like, man. Well, oh, that's what she don't like. And he's right there in the midst, stirring it up, trying to make it not work. But you got to fight. You got to pray. You got to fast. Take a break. Acts chapter 13. These are all... Pure words from God. No matter who's speaking it. Whether it's Paul, whether it's Moses, Ezekiel, Isaiah, David, Solomon, whoever is telling you to do something according to the word of God. It's all pure. Even if it's telling you if you do that, you're going in the fire. People don't want to hear that it's a fire. God loves everyone. You don't want to just murder all those people? He just murdered a whole, you know what I'm saying? You, God loves him too, huh? Okay. He wants him to repent. Acts 13, pick it up at verse 13. When you get it, go ahead. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John departed from them, returning to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Wait a minute. So they sat down in the synagogue on the Sabbath day in the New Testament after the death and resurrection of Jesus? And yet, they're going to be filling up the places tomorrow. Tell my day, love the Lord. And, and, and we saw a church today on our way, they would look like they was having a sale. <laughs> Y'all really wrong. <laughs> and then you're going to go to your church tomorrow, which is the only time of the year is during Pentecost when Sunday is a holy day, and you're going to eat pork and everything else and go spend money and do all the things you love to do on the wrong day, but you're calling it holy. Nothing is sacred with them. They don't understand. But that don't mean go beat them up. You know, as soon as you hey, man, you know what you <laughs> But you can read them these things and let them know, hey, this is the law that cannot be done away with. Every word of God is settled in heaven forever. You know, it is settled. It is always going to be there. Don't change. Keep reading. And after reading, and after the reading of the law and the prophets. And then you can show them this. Wait a minute. So they're in the New Testament now after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And here it is. They keep in the Sabbath, right? And they're reading the law and the prophets. Why they don't read this? Why they don't read this? Because then there would be a problem in your congregation. He got to explain that. And he going to do a lot of Sugar Ray Litter dancing around the ring with them. <laughs> Keep going. And after reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, mm -hmm. Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. You see that? Skip to verse 42. Because we just hitting a few things here. I just want to show. Go ahead. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The next Sabbath, not the next day or the next first day or Sunday, right? The next Sabbath, go ahead. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, mm -hmm. who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And that's what you want. You want your brothers to, hey, continue in the word of God, man. What you're doing is a great service to God. It's not to make me and pat you on the back. I don't do this to feel good for me. Last minute calls to do a lesson. I ain't doing it to get no pat on the back. Brother, you, hey man, look, we doing a service to God to people. So I can get eternal life. So if you want to call that being selfish or, yeah, because I'm trying to get eternal life. And I ain't letting nobody mess me up. I don't care what you say. I got some slick stuff too. I can go, <laughs> hey, I'm going right in this book. I got you tomorrow. I got you right before you leave, truthfully. <coughs> That's how you have to be. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it straight 100 with God. And hey, you're the one causing the problem. So, look here. This is what it says when the problem is this. This is what we ought to do. Can you do this? Can you get placed to wrath like the scripture said? Because somebody's going to keep being that way because Satan is still around. Go ahead. 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And that's what we want. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, mm. they were filled with envy mm. and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Go ahead. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Now you see how Paul brought in the order? Israel is first. You see that? All the way here, just like how we had before. It's always water with God. Israel first. So he said it was necessary. He said, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. They got hardcore with these brothers. And said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But, but seeing that ye put it, put it from you. You putting it away from you because you on some other job. Go ahead. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Oh, he just told y'all going in the fire for this. You causing problems in front of other people about the word of God. You going to the fire for this. Go ahead. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Mm. Keep going. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, mm. I have set thee a light to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now he said, for so the Lord commanded us. Paul wasn't doing this on his own free will. 
The Lord commanded us, he said, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. That's what we're supposed to be doing, helping people get salvation. If that ain't your mission, you got a problem. Because there ain't nothing bigger than eternal life for me. All that other little stuff we can deal with, but I'm trying to get eternal life. Amen. That is it. Go ahead. Verse 48, and we're going to move on. And when, and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad uh -huh. and glorified the word of the Lord. Go ahead. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Do you see that? They believed because when they heard that, you mean tell me we didn't get, we didn't heard so many times we ain't getting eternal, just like today, we didn't heard we didn't get eternal life. All I get to do is lick some boots. <laughs> Here it is, they're getting happy, man. You mean tell me I can get salvation? Yes, you can. So if you ain't preaching that, something wrong with your preaching. Let's go now to James chapter 2. Again, every word of God is pure. And we read again this is about salvation. And whoever wants it can get it. I can, I can read where the Lord said he's going to destroy some people, but also read where the Lord said if that nation who he gives, presents evil sentence to it, they will repent, he will repent. You can read that with Jonah on your own time, what he did with Nineveh. If them Ninevites would have not been fasting, the animals fasting, he was going to destroy them. And you see how Jonah got upset? Yeah, I did all that. Yeah, you understand? <laughs> James 2, pick it up at verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay, so when some people read this, they automatically say, you can't keep the law. <laughs> that's what they do. See, that's why we're it's no good. All he's saying is if Let's say you done kept all the commandments. You keep the Sabbath. You don't lie. You don't steal, commit adultery. But yet and still, you covet. Now you are a transgressor. Matter of fact, hold your spot here. Go to 1 John 3. That's how you do it for them. And if they don't get it, just give them time. 1 John 3, 4. Because if you done kept all the commandments, but you don't honor your mother and father, guess what? You are a transgressor. Simple as that. You done kept everything, but yet you lied. You just became a transgressor. That's all that's saying. That ain't saying don't keep trying to do it right. It just means when you break one, yeah, you are convinced as a transgressor. Not that you can't keep them. Just stop lying. Verse 4. First John 3 and 4. When you get it, go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's all it means if you break the law. Don't mean you can't keep it. And it ain't been done away. We read that in Matthew 5 and 17. Right? Back to James chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 11. And he's going to explain it. Go ahead. For he that said... Do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. So if you ain't, oh, I ain't commit adultery, but you just kill someone, so you're a transgressor. Just that simple. Go ahead. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. That's all he's trying to tell the people. So when you show them that, because some people will use this, script, oh, no, so you can't keep it all. There's no way possible. Well, when you read it with some understanding, it is possible. You just don't want to do it. And we know that's what you're trying to do. So, we show you around about, this is how it works. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. Show you how important it really is. Pick it up at verse 1. After you read that to them, you know what I'm saying? They still say, oh, you can't keep the commandments, you can't keep them. Well, read this right here to them. You say, First John chapter 5, you say you love God, and God loves you, 
well, then you should be doing what God loves. It's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? I forgot what's that uh, TV guy said, who do you love and who loves you? <laughs> Some of y'all know who that is. I forgot the guy's name. Who do you love and who loves you? Well, yeah, you know who he is. He was a game show guy. Yeah. But the thing is, we know who God loves and we know who loves God. If you're doing this, go ahead. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Uh huh. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. That's right, go ahead. By this we know that we love the children of God. Now, this is how we know we love the children of God. We become the children of God, go ahead. When we love God and keep his commandments. Not that you just, I'm a child of God. No, and I love God. No, you got to keep them commandments. Because he's going to tell you something about what them commandments are. If they say, I love God, I love God, but yet you done beat this man out of $20. Yeah, hey, I love Jesus. Jesus got me good. You know what I'm saying? You done beat the man out of money. How you loving God and you defraud your brother? But this is love. Verse 3. For this is the love of God, mm -hmm. that we keep his commandments. That's simple. Do you keep the commandments of God? If you ain't keeping the commandments of God, you don't love God. It's just that simple. Now you tell me where this changed that. It doesn't change. Go ahead. And his commandments are not grievous. They ain't grievous if you love God. Can you give yourself over to wrath one time for your mind? Can you do that? That's work. I guarantee you it's work. Let somebody cut you off or hit your nice car. What you, you know what I'm saying? Transformer voice and everything come out. <laughs> you ready to call all type of issues. You know what I'm saying? Somebody blow grass on your brand new washed car. You flip it out. What? I just signed in on, oh, man. I'm a... Simple stuff. Simple. And I can't talk like I got it under control because sometimes, man. <laughs> but we human and we have to learn. That's part of God's word. And his word is pure. Purified seven times over. You can't get that clean. Not in this body. <laughs> Not in this body. Romans chapter 13. Again, you know, like they say, some people look holy and everything. They'll sit up in class with you and everything or be at another class looking all holy. But remember what we read. We were reading again just to keep it fresh what they are on the inside. And you like that on the inside are filling other places like that. Can't be like that. Romans 13, pick it up at verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. And that's how you love one another, like God said love, keeping them commandments. Go ahead, we're going to see that. Go ahead. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For, mm -hmm. for this thou shalt not commit adultery. See that? That's how you love. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. You ain't going to kill me because we get into an altercation. Why would you want to do that anyway? you filled with hatred. You got Satan running through your blood then. If that's what you want to do instantly when something goes bad, you want to kill somebody, guess who your daddy is? It ain't God. Because that should be raising up in your mind to take another person's life. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. And just because you see it there don't mean it belongs in your hand. <laughs> you know, man, you don't, you don't know about that. <laughs> like most people used to step on it and yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And you can't be lying. You cannot do that. Go ahead. Thou shalt not covet. Uh, and you can't covet. I want what's yours. You can't do that. Go ahead. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Mm -hmm. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the neighbor. So if you don't want these things to happen to you, don't do them to nobody else. It's just that simple. 
And we've been reading all the nice, clean scriptures. Some things do cut. You need them to cut. So that you know that you might have been doing this. Right? Let's see if we can find some real quick. Y'all want to? All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Verse 22. Deuteronomy 22 and 22. Let me get it going. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, mm -hmm. then they shall both of them die. You see that? You're probably wondering how that really cuts. Keep reading. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how it's going to cut. Go ahead. If a damsel that is a virgin be so betrothed. just think about it. That woman that was being laid with wasn't a virgin, was she? If you land with some woman and she ain't a virgin, yeah, that's what the Lord is saying. And you got somebody. How you finding you a virgin? Let that sink in. Go ahead. Uh, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, mm -hmm. then sh then he shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and he shall stone them with stones that they die. Why they ain't doing this? This should be done every day, because that's what's going on. Ain't nothing but going on out there is fornication. That's what's going on. All these, I ain't going to be with you today, I'm going to be with you. All the player players and the female players and all that stuff, this is what's going on in the city. Porter. Go ahead. The damsel, because she cried not, mm -hmm. being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, mm -hmm. so thou shalt put away evil from among you. That's what they was doing back then. We can't do that here, though, can we? Can't do it. But this is what the Lord said do. When we was in the land, we was not doing it right then. We ain't doing it right in captivity. You're going to do it right, though, when the Lord brings us back home. Because when he brings us back home, you're going to see some things that you ain't never seen before. Let's go look at Matthew 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, mm -hmm. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Now, see how important of a question that is? It said, because some people just want to look at the building and everything. It says, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? You know what's going to happen when the Lord returns? Some people think it's going to be nice and peachy. It's called the day of the Lord for a reason. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. He's going to tear this earth up. It's not going to be pretty. So he said, the sign of that coming and the end of the world. And then they throw it in the end of the world. Because when you come, we know it's over with. It is an end. If you ain't right when the Lord returns, <laughs> keep going. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Now he's going to take them around the corner with this thing. This is what he said to do. Go ahead. Take heed that no man deceive you. Keep your mind right. Don't let no man deceive you about what's written in this book. What Jesus said, what God said, don't let nobody do that. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And a lot of people going to come in Christ's name. Or they're going to come with, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm like that. I follow Jesus too. I follow we fall together. How about we just go hang together? <laughs> you know? And next thing you know, the deception comes out. 
and it makes it so smooth. And you got to be careful because there's a lot of people out here, even sisters, deceiving. All this new witchcraft, it ain't really new, but it's, it's so haunting to hear some of this stuff. Like, when I, I, man, I don't, I try to, man, I don't want to hear that because you don't know what they chanting nowadays. You hear the, they humming, I'm like, oh, heck no, man. <laughs> they you know that hum is in your head and you can throw something crazy. Who knows? But the point is, it's going to get so chaotic, people. If you think it's going to stay the way it is, look at some of these shows. They're showing you how they love Satan. That's right. They're showing you on TV and they're showing you how it ain't nothing you can do to stop it. Because God saying it has to come to fruition. Read what he's going to do. Go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars mm -hmm. and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. But the end is coming. And look, you got wars and ruin. Now, now they claim giving all this money to Ukraine and all that stuff. Look at what's going on. Wars, rumors of wars. You don't know what's really going on. You can just see the TV and hear it. Wars, rumors of wars. Now they're showing what happened at the Capitol again. Wars, rumors, wars. Go ahead. For nations shall rise against nation, mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there shall be famines and pestilences, mm -hmm. and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. Now wait, wait, wait and, and see when these things go down. See how many people cry to God. They cry to God about COVID. Then an earthquake happens. Oh, you're going to have something really to think about when famine hits like that. Remember, if you save your life, you're going to lose your life. Remember, something has to happen so bad to where, hey man, for you to have to eat and drink, you're going to have to see the mark. It's got to get that bad. So people are going to find out where they stand with God when they do that thing. Go ahead. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. Go ahead. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you. Now, if the Lord said that they're going to do that, what makes you think you can stop it? You ain't stopping nothing with nothing. The Lord said, I'm a, they're going to deliver you up and they shall kill you. Go ahead. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Uh -huh. And then shall many be offended. Wait a minute. And you're going to get offended because you believed in this, and now all of a sudden, wait a minute, I thought the Lord was protecting me. <laughs> well, yeah, he is protecting you. But still, some of us got to go through this. Go ahead. And shall betray one another, mm. and shall hate one another. Mm -hmm. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. You see how this false stuff keeps popping up? It's going to be so quick. One catastrophe after another, then all of a sudden the lie come up. Yeah, you, know, you know how they do? And, and all the conspiracies and stuff, then some bad up again, then another one come up to break you. That's how I say, look at it. He knows what's in our mind, too. He know what can break you. Go ahead. And because iniquity shall abound. All this sin going by, it's going to get bigger and bigger and rapid. It's going to just be so huge. Go ahead. The love of many shall wax cold. Man, I can't take it no more. So much is going on, the news and, the, and, and all that stuff. You see how they deal with COVID? It's going to be Way worse. Way worse. The Lord said this earth is going to be chaotic before he returns. Psychotic breaks everywhere. Everybody, you people running in their cars, running people over. You see it today. It's going to be worse. Go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh-huh. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Keep going. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, mm -hmm. whoso readeth, let him understand. Go ahead. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Mm -hmm. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Urgent matter right here. Go ahead. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Mm -hmm. Meaning I can't wait for you. You know what time it is? That's what it is. He just said, I can't wait for you. If you're in the field, don't return. Hey, I can't come home. <laughs> Get in the car and go. Get whatever. Let's go. That's, what, that's the urgent matter. If you go home, and I'm telling you, people, we're going to have to meet. That's what it's called. And that's why it's time to flee. It's an urgent call. And if you miss it, you miss it. Go ahead. 19. Uh-huh. And woe unto them that are with child. Oh, so all this new baby making. 
And letting you know, like now they're crying about the formulas, but even in this time, it's not time. You got to think of what's more important in these days and times that we are living in right now. We are on our way to a psychotic break in this world. It's called the Great Tribulation. Keep reading. And to them that give suck in those days. Uh-huh. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Right? Because it's harsh and what? Neither on the Sabbath day. Because it ain't no break in the Sabbath day. That's law, right? Keep going. For then shall be great tribulation. Now you ain't never heard or seen this. You only heard what you heard from the past, whatever wars that they claim and what they did. This has never happened before, and it's going to be so great of a tribulation. It has never been done before or again. Go ahead. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. It ain't going to never get this bad again. That's why it's so urgent that you do not let nobody steal this word from you. Right. Don't let nobody play with your emotion on this word. If you don't agree, you don't agree. Wait till the Lord give it to you. Simple as that. There's no argument. Hey, man, I don't get it. So I'll be back with you. Spin it when I get it. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple. What are we fighting for? I don't understand it like you. Well, then you ain't got no understanding. Okay, then. Maybe I don't. Okay? But what I do have is the commandments. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. If I don't understand that infinite knowledge that you have, that you have, that you think you have, then I ain't supposed to have it. If Daniel was told to shut up the books and go on about his business, what makes you think you don't have to have that same MO? I don't get it, so I'm going to shut the book. Hey, man, I ain't got it. I ain't got to go no further. You ain't about to squeeze it into me. One verse, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. That's right. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, mm -hmm. that we may do all the words of this law. And that's what the Lord say do. Psalms 25. Say the secret things of the Lord, right? The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Psalms 25. Pick it up at verse uh, You know what? Start at verse 1. Psalm 25 and 1. Let's read a little bit. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Uh -huh. O my God, I trust in thee. Mm -hmm. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. That's right. Go ahead. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Go ahead. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. That's what we should be praying for. Go ahead. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Mm -hmm. On thee do I wait all the day. You should be. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses. For they have been ever of old. Remember he said in Psalms, what we read earlier in 119, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Those mercies are up there too. Go ahead. Remember not the sin of my youth. That's right. Nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. And you want the Lord to not remember your transgressions. Because you do them every day. I don't care how perfect you think you are. Ain't nobody got it right. But you should be striving to get it right and doing whatever it takes to get it right. Right? Go ahead. Verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Yes, he is. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Yes, yeah, some of them are going to learn the hard way. The lake of fire. Go ahead. The meek will he guide in judgment. Mm -hmm. And the meek will he teach his way. Go ahead. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. That's right. Unto such as keep his covenant. And it's testimony. See how important it is to keep these commandments? Go ahead. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. You see how David is just reaching out, talking about all his, always acknowledging his sins? For they are great. Go ahead. What man is he that feareth the Lord? What man is he that feareth the Lord? 
him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. That's right. Only that way God will choose. Not you. You don't choose the path. God chose it. You just follow. Right? Go ahead. His soul shall dwell at ease. Uh -huh. And his seed shall inherit the earth. Go ahead. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And the secret is... The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And what? And he will show them his covenant. You see how that Deuteronomy 29, 29 just popped back up? Mm -hmm. He said the secret is of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And he said, it says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them. He's giving you his commandments all over. Man, look here. Here you go, secret. You keep these. Because <laughs> if you keep these, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. Verse 15. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, mm -hmm. for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. And that's what we want. Every time an issue come up. But if he don't, guess what? You just deal with it. And trust in the Lord, no matter what. Uh, even under death. I know we don't want to hear that, but sometimes that's what it's about. That is what it's about. Leviticus 18. Just bounce a few of these. So they say, uh, well, we'll let the scriptures say what it is. Leviticus 18 and 22. When you get it, go ahead. Thou shalt not buy with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Every word of God is pure. Mm -hmm. I don't care what type of parade you have. You can't change what's written in here. It is settled in heaven forever. Go ahead. Neither shall, neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Mm -hmm. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. Because they're still doing this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It is confusion. It is confusion. Go ahead. Defile not yourselves in any of these things for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And, and the nations was cast out before we got into the land because of these things. You see that? They were doing some wild stuff, and we went over there. Because <laughs> 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 that's what Israel do. And man, did you see what they meant to you all, man? <laughs> and next thing you know, you doing it. And the Lord said, don't do that. Right? Go ahead and read that verse again. Defile ye not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Verse 25. And the land is defiled. And the land is defiled. And you don't think this land is defiled? And this is not Israel. This land is defiled. And look what the Lord said. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And you don't think the Lord is coming to visit the iniquity of the earth? But definitely in the lands. Go ahead. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. And that's what the land did. It vomited out the inhabitants. Keep reading. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, mm -hmm. and shall not commit, commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation. Neither any of your own nation, what? Nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. Even if you get some strangers to come hang with you and teach them, they ain't supposed to do it either. Keep going. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. Mm. The land that the land spew you not out also when ye defile it, as it spew out the nations that were before you. The Lord saying, I'll spew you out just like I spewed them out. Mm. And if you look warm, the Lord said, He'll spew you out. Right. You gotta be right with the Lord. Ain't no one way. Oh Lord, I'll kick it with you today, but uh, oh, half of the day, okay? <laughs> You can't do that with the Lord. It's all or nothing. The Lord said, I'll spew you out real quick. Man, you stink. Get away from me. <laughs> That's how it is. He said, you, are, you abhor him when you do wicked. Keep reading. Verse 29. Uh-huh. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Go ahead. Therefore ye shall keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any of these, any, that ye commit not any one of these abominable, abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein, I am the Lord your God. He said, Therefore shall ye keep my ordinances, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, 
practices that they are doing. Because I'm going to cut you off. That's God's word. That ain't me. That ain't the house of Jacob. That's what God said. This is from the King James Version Bible, right? Let's look at something else. Deuteronomy 23. Actually, go to 22. We're going to go into 23, too. Read verse um, 5. Deuteronomy 22. I'm sorry. I'm throwing these in here. Deuteronomy 22. Pick it up at verse 5. Read verse 5, then go to Deuteronomy 23 and read verse 1. 22 and 5. Go ahead. Or whosoever toucheth any creeping thing. No, Deuteronomy 22. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. You need another book, bro? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so you were waiting for that one, wasn't you? <laughs> Take your time. Deuteronomy 22. Verse 5. Verse 5. Yes, sir. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh-huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's what the Lord thy God is saying, right? Ain't me. It ain't in the house of Jacob. It's what the Bible says. You got a problem with God? You're going to deal with him anyway. Chapter 23 and 1. He that is wounded in the stones or hath its privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. You got a problem with God. That's what the Lord said. Every word of God is pure. Simple as that. Let's go to Matthew 22. Lord is so precise in what he's saying do. And don't take a rocket scientist. You ain't got to be the smartest person. Like, like he said, you got to go to college to be ordained, to be a preacher. Uh, I didn't go to college. I just read the Bible. Oh, really? So you were ordained? You know, like, do you need a plaque or something? I mean, <laughs> what? No. I ain't got no plaque. I mean, I got a Bible. That's it. And I read it. I study it, you know? And I got a lot more to read and study. But I said, if you read it, you understand it, it'll line up because the Lord will come visit with you like you read, right? The Lord said he's standing at the door and not. You got to listen and let him come in. I mean, you got to submit. If you got a problem with submitting to God, he ain't coming in. He ain't coming in. You, you want all this filth to be in here with me? <laughs> the Lord said, uh -huh. He don't leave you right now. <laughs> That's how it go. Matthew 22, pick it up at verse 36. When you get it, go ahead. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Mm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's right, go ahead. This is the first and great commandment. Mm -hmm. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's right. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the the law and the prophet. Then he said in Matthew 5, he ain't come to do away with it. He let you know again, that's what you got to keep. If you truly love the Lord, Luke 4. Keep in there. I think I cut it down for y'all. I think. Did I cut it down? Yeah, I sure did. Luke 4. Pick it up at verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Mm -hmm. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Mm -hmm. So I, I told the lady today, I said, well, if you're a follower of Christ, wouldn't you do what Christ do? And she was like, yeah. All right, keep reading. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. And I said, but well, Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day to stood up to read. Don't that make sense? That if Jesus did it and you a follower of Jesus, that you would do what Jesus did? Yeah, it does make sense. But she's not following. You know what I'm saying? Not just she's not following. Maybe they don't understand that that's how they're supposed to follow. That's what the Christians, the ones that say they're Christians, they ain't following it like that because they don't understand 
That's what you're supposed to do. You say you're a follower of Jesus. Well, Jesus said he going to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. What day do you go? Tomorrow, on Sunday, the first day of the week. That's not the right day. This is the right day. Go ahead, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now, we say Paul saying that after the reading of the law and the prophets, well, Jesus is reading the law and the prophets too, because this is the prophet Isaiah. Go ahead. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, mm -hmm. because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, Go ahead. to preach deliverance to the captives, yeah. and recovering of sight to the blind, mm -hmm. to set at liberty them which are bruised. And we are bruised. Good thing Pentecost is coming. We can understand what liberty is all about, because freedom is going to come when we go back home. But it comes through the Lord. You can't get there on your own. I'm going on. No, you ain't. <laughs> Not on your own, Smith, you ain't. <laughs> These nations hold you back. Verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's what the Lord is going to do when he returns. He's got a lot to do. So you can read that in Isaiah 61. <clears throat> Revelations 22. Pick it up at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. Oh, you know what? Pick it up uh, verse 7. Verse 7, I'm sorry. Since I cut it, I can add this. Go ahead. <laughs> verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that hath keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. He, she, go ahead. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Now, look what the angel's behavior is. So I don't even see how they think that an angel would lay with a woman if it's telling this man this. Go ahead. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. See, the angel said, Don't do that. And why? For I am thy fellow servant, uh -huh. and of thy brethren the prophets, uh -huh. and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. So the angels have to follow orders too. So why would they do something out of order like that? That ain't in their nature anyway. Go ahead. And he saith unto me, mm -hmm. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, right. for the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Go ahead. He this is a message for us future servants, right? Yes, sir. What's to come? Look what he says right here. He that is unjust. Let him be unjust still. The Lord said, if you want to keep behaving the way you behave, you don't trust in me, you don't want to do what I say, stay unjust. Go ahead. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. If you don't want to clean your filthiness, stay filthy. Go ahead. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And you that's keeping my commandments, you better keep them. Go ahead. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Hey, you want to be holy, you stay holy. Go ahead. And behold. I come quickly, and my reward is with me mm -hmm. to give every man according as his work shall be. Now that ought to scare you. Because he said, I come quickly. What you mean you come quickly? I don't see you yet. He already came. He's coming. We just don't see it yet. That's how fast it's going to be. Boom. <laughs> He's going to come like a thief in the night to those who are not prepared. Because you doing all that stuff. But your back turned. They need to show the boo. And you know, <laughs> it's over with. I caught you dirty. Got you dirty. You out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't get caught like that. Because the Lord said, I come quickly. You don't know how fast it's going to be. Just think about how things happen. So the Lord said in verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To what? Read that again. To give. And to give every man according as his work shall be. Hold the spot there. And go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let me show you how that works. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 13. Remember, every word of God is pure. He said, I, I come quickly. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. If you say it in court, in cadence like that, you remember it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're doing those things, the Lord say, hey, this is what you do. I got a reward for you when I show up. 
But if I show up and you have these filthy things going on, this is what he's saying. Verse 13, because this is the end of it all right here. Regardless of what you think or do or know, go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh-huh. Fear God and keep his commandments. Mm-hmm. For this is the whole duty of man. That's right. Didn't he say he'd come quickly and his reward is willing to give every man according to their work shall be, right? Yes. Sir. Look what he said right here. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into, into judgment uh -huh. with every secret thing, uh -huh. whether it be good uh -huh. or whether it be evil. Get it together. We have to get it together. Simple as that. Ain't nobody got it perfect. We have work to do. Back to Revelations 22. Pick it up at verse 14. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. That means you ain't going through nobody else but Jesus. You want to call him Yahshua or any of them other name? That's who you're going to deal with, and his word does not change. It does not change. This is what he said, verse 14. Again, these commandments the secret things that belong to us was revealed unto his to keep his commandments. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without are dogs and sorcerers mm. and whoremongers. You see all that? We ain't even, you got to understand that these things are coming. Sorcerers. You see that? It's going to be whoremongering, murderers, and what? And I, and idolaters, uh -huh. and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All that was going on before the Lord returned, and when he showed up, that's what he was, and that's what he's destroying. Go ahead. I, Jesus, have set my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Mm. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Mm. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, mm -hmm. and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. He said, whosoever. That's whosoever. You can't change that. That's right. Whosoever. You want this thing, you better come on with it. But you can't come your own route. That's the problem. People think they can come their own route, right? right. Now, I want to show... Something else I want to read real quick. Um, go to Revelations 14. make this last because this is going to sum up what the Lord is coming to do. Somewhat that we can understand. Because people don't realize the Lord is going to cause a great problem on this earth. And it needs to be because we're not going to make it no better. Man cannot change. We're headed for destruction. We're destroying everything we put our hands to. No matter how self-righteous they think they are, you cannot help it's dirty. The Lord has to clean it up. Start at verse 1. Let's read. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred, forty, and four thousand, having his, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of har harpers harping with their harps. You hear that? The Lord got these angels doing something. Go ahead. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Keep going. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which go which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. First fruits coming tomorrow. Go ahead. And in their mouths was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Then the Lord say, clean your act up. Ain't that what we've been reading? Go ahead. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, mm -hmm. and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. You see that? He said, this angel flying, having the everlasting gospel to preach. Because some people think, which it is, good news. When you preach the gospel, it's good news. 
But look what's going to happen. Go ahead. Saying with a loud voice. Uh -huh. Fear God and First give him glory. First, he's telling you to fear God. Go ahead. And give glory to him. And give glory to him. Go ahead. For the hour of his judgment is come. You didn't know God was coming with judgment? Yeah. And look what he's going to do. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and uh -huh. the fountains of waters. Uh -huh. And there followed another angel saying, uh -huh. Babylon is fallen. Mm -hmm. It's fallen. The great city, because she had because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why he got to destroy it. Go ahead. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. Now, you know, you heard about drinks that are straight, no chaser. That's how God's wrath is coming. Things are going to get so bad, some people are just going to take this mark. You cannot turn back once you start following God. So he said, if you, he says, he says, in verse 9, and, then, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and received his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And I tell him, you say, God love everybody, but yeah, he got wrath right here. That's a lot of wrath. He said, which is poured out without mixture. He gave you straight wrath. Go ahead. Into the cup of his indignation. And then he said, not only is he giving you wrath, I'm, I got wrath and indignation in the cup. Straight for you. You're going to drink it. Go ahead. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. Where's the love that God has for everybody if he's saying he's going to do this when he returns? Go ahead. And in the presence of the Lamb. All of them going to be looking at this while this is going down. Torment. And they look like you'd be screaming, at, I'm sorry, it's too late. <laughs> he that is filthy, let him be filthy. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. That goes for the people that think that's fire ain't going to be forever. He letting you know. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Go ahead. And they have no rest day nor night. No, wait a minute. Where's the love? <laughs> <laughs> All I see is wrath and indignation. If you didn't do what he say, do. You can't wait for the last minute and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it together now. Boom! Oh, man, he caught me. <laughs> Too late? Go ahead. Pick and up the heaven again. Top of the level. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his, of his name. Right. But we ain't got a word if we did this. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Uh -huh. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. You see, that's why I say even if you die in this thing, it said, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. That means you can die in the Lord or not. Better die in the Lord if you got to die. Go ahead. From henceforth. From henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And your works going to follow them. Remember when we just read Ecclesiastes 12? Mm -hmm. Every secret thing is going to bring the judgment, whether it be good or evil, Right? So your work's going to follow you. Go ahead. 14. Uh-huh. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Uh-huh. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice unto him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. Uh, oh, so the Lord about to reap now, right? Didn't he say vengeance is his? That's right. Vengeance is his, and look what he's going to do. He said reap. Go ahead. For the time has come for thee to reap, mm -hmm. for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Mm -hmm. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Mm -hmm. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Mm -hmm. And another angel came out from, out from the altar which had power over fire, uh -huh. and crowd with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle. And gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, mm. for her grapes are fully ripe. They're fully ripe. That's it. That's what he said. It's over with. Go ahead. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, 
and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Mm. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and the blood came out of the winepress even unto the horses' bridles for the, by the space of a thousand and six hundred forelongs. That's that wrath for the Lord that he's going to do. He's going to do it. It's written in there for him to do it. Ain't nothing we can do about it but following his orders so that we don't get caught up in that wrath. Right. So again, I hope you got something. This is every word of God is pure. Man. That's that. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.